Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about switching roles. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, I am a sysadmin with about three years of experience. I'm planning to switch career and become an application developer. How can I do this without compromising my current salary? Well, you probably can't. I would say. Well, it depends on what you're being paid, of course. I mean, if you're being paid about the same sort of money that a software engineer uh, is, well, then that's not a problem for you. But uh, you're not going to be able to maintain your current salary when you go from something that you, like, I mean, unless you really do go to a company where they have no clue where uh, what the difference is between a system admin and a software developer. I mean, I have people on a daily basis who come up to me and say, if, ask me if I can fix their printer because I work with data. That's what they say here in Sweden. You work with data, right? Not with computers. They say data. Yeah. I work with data. I, I've been working with data for a long, long time. I started working with data when I was a kid. And if you get to that sort of position, then yes, maybe you can... Con can just switch your switch jobs and not compromise your current salary. But if for some reason you're being paid quite a lot uh, because you have experience, I mean, three years of experience is enough for you to see a, see a difference uh, from starting over from scratch. I will give you one thing that is that might be a plus for you, which is that you have relevant tech skills. So you're not a software developer per se, but you have system administrative, um, as, as this admin background. And that in of itself means that you work with computers. And if you can swing that, it's likely, it's possible that you could get a software engineering role or a programmer's job and still be paid about the same sort of salary. But I think that you should set your expectations at that you might have to go down in salary because you simply don't have the skills. Uh, it's uh, you, you. It's like uh, it's like any anyone. If you want to switch your careers, unless you can really, really swing that the skills that you've already acquired so far, because not uh, some skills do transfer and some skills don't transfer. I mean, just you working for three years with uh, sys admin work doesn't necessarily make you a programmer, but it makes you a lot more, like you have a lot more of in terms of transferable skills than someone who has been a florist, for example. Uh, so, I mean, it's not all bad, but you should definitely, uh, I think, consider the fact that you might have to go down in salary. And this is one of those things where I really think that uh, you, uh, you kind of have to think a little bit broader about your career, I think, um, and because I have friends who have this problem as well, where they go and they real like they get is when they were young, when they were in their twenties, they got their first job as tech support, I think, and so what they did was to plug out. They plugged out of their career. They plugged out of um, their ev ev like evolving as humans and they went into autopilot mode basically for the longest time and now several years later they've realized that actually you know what i really hate my job i don't really like it at all uh, and before they got to the point where they hated it they had a lot of frustration and they had other things they wanted to do but they were too comfortable doing the thing that they were doing to understand or either they were blinded by something or for whatever reason they didn't act on anything they started feeling bad and they didn't actually do something about it and now the because I, I like to say that if you have something if it's a big lie or a misdeed or something like that and it's it's eats at you it's like a, it's like a tick or a, a parasite or a, a thorn if if you you can of course just learn how to live with it, but uh, if you don't if you're not careful, it's going to get infected and it's going to get worse and worse and worse until it starts to affect you so much that you can't really think about anything else. 
And so now they're in this exact position that you find yourself, or, well, they, they are in a worse position because they have no relevant tech skills and they don't want to lose the salary that they have because by instead of trying to really ask themselves what will make me happy, they try to buy away the sad. That's what they did. They, try, they got a, a slightly too expensive apartment, slightly more expensive hobby than they could really afford, and the, all these different things that they kind of tried to... Uh, so, like, uh, they spoiled themselves with the things that they could afford with their salary, and these hollow things are no longer giving them that sensation of fulfillment. And I think that that is the most important thing anybody can do ever, uh, once you get to be old enough to understand how to do it. Uh, you have to understand, learn how you how you work, because just buying a lot of stuff usually doesn't solve the problem. It's mm. going to make you feel better for a little while, but long term, you need something more sustainable. And as I was saying, I think that you are lucky in a way because I think that you can probably get about the same sort of money because you have a relevant experience. But I also think that you should start thinking broader. Start to, like because if you could become a software developer and you want to make yourself successful in that space and make even like you have a higher salary and so forth you have to understand that you're you're not going to you're not going to be happy doing the exact same thing forever so broadening your horizons and working on learning as uh, learning as you go along and trying to increase your sphere of influence as I like to say it go from just being a Okay, so let's say that your career path is, okay, you were just, quote unquote now, a sysadmin, and now you're a software developer. And then after a little while, you become a tech lead, and then after a little while, you become an architect. Like it doesn't, you don't have to go through th this way. I'm just saying, go uh, diversify yourself a little bit, because you've already found out that system admin work wasn't for you, for some reason. And unless you're careful, you might find in a few years that, well, you know what, software development, it's kind of boring as well. Everything gets boring with time, guys. You have to uh, you have to account for that. Learn who you are and learn what's going to keep you happy. And some of us, uh, the best thing for us is actually to just ride the, ride the wave for as long as it's fun and then get off the ride and start riding the next thing. So what I want you to take away from this is that I'm very sorry to say that it's very like unlikely that you will be able to to keep the same salary um, if you start over as a software developer. Uh, it's possible in this case, I would say, because you're a system admin and you are a tech person, and depending on what you're being paid today, you might see the same sort of money from a junior level position as a software developer. You could, in theory, actually go directly to a mid-level type of role now, depending on company and circumstances and so forth, because you have relevant prior knowledge. It's just like being an electrical engineer or some or a mathematician and so forth certain skills even though they're not specific to a programmer's job transfer really well and makes you a very uh, it gives you a little bit of a boost it gives you a higher aptitude for the work a software developer does than say if you're working in something that is extremely different like being a florist or something like that or a zookeeper i don't know uh, so it could be possible for you to swing, but I also urge you to really have a think about that, and I think that everybody should think about that. Uh, if you're buying things, or if you're concerned that your salary about salary and so forth, really ask yourself why. Because if if the problem is if you need the money, you need the money because you have families and so forth and so forth. But if you're making a decent living and you uh, you're just buying these various things, then it's likely that you're just trying to fill a ga fill a void. And in my experience, buying things is just it's like a patch over a much more serious issue. Try to really figure out what will make a sustainable, happy person out of you instead of trying to buy things to make that to fix that that's what's going to help the economy but it's probably not going to help you have a great day